So now we are into the last segment of our periodontal ligament. So this session is about functions of periodontal ligament. So there are basically five types of functions. Physical functions, formative and remodeling function, nutritional function, homeostatic function and sensory functions. In physical functions, the first thing is it provides a soft tissue casing to protect the vessels and nerves from injury by mechanical forces. So it protects it because it acts as a casing okay, and protects the underlying nerves and vessels. The second fun physical function is it is transmitting the occlusal forces to the bone. Okay, this bone it transmitted the forces happening at the occlusal side and it is transmitted to the bone so when there is a force so when there is a force it will be transmitted to the bone okay so it will be transmitted to the bone and attachment of teeth to the bone as we had seen and maintenance of the gingival tissue in their proper relationship with the teeth and resistance to the impact of occlusal forces. So they are the physical functions. It provides casing, it transmits forces, it attaches the teeth to the bone, it maintains the gingival tissues and it resists the impact of occlusal forces. So basically there are various theories which explains this, the forces, how the force is transmitted to the bones through periodontal ligament. The first theory is tensional theory, then the viscoelastic theory and one more theory we have thixotropic theory. So what is tensional theory? Tensional theory says when uh, a force is applied to the crown, okay, so principal fibers first unfolds and straighten. So these fibers unfolds and straighten, then transmit the force to the alveolar bone, okay, which causes elastic deformation of the bone socket. Then finally, the alveolar bone has reached its limit. The load is transmitted to the basal bone. So this is alveolar bone. Then we have a basal bone. That is mandible and maxilla. So that is a tensional theory. It is basically says that the principal fibers of periodontal ligament are the major factors in supporting the tooth and transmitting the forces to the bone. Okay, so... The principal fibers unfolds, it transmits to the alveolar bone, alveolar bone elastic formation changes happens and it reaches a limit then it transmits to the basal bone. But many investigators find this theory insufficient to explain the experimental evidence. Then came the viscoelastic theory. According to this theory, what happens? When a force is applied on the tooth, there is a change in extracellular fluid. So extracellular fluid, which uh, fluid from periodontal ligament ex uh, escapes to this marrow spaces, okay, because the tooth will be compressed. When force is there, tooth will be compressed. So fluid will be escaping to the marrow spaces. So depletion of fluid. So the fibers absorbs and it becomes tightened so fluid will be into this marrow spaces the fibers absorb the pressure and it tightens so there will be blood vessel stenosis so arterial back pressure created ballooning of vessels and then passage of blood ultra filtrates into the tissues so the lost fluid replenished so this is a viscoelastic theory when force applied the fluid enters into marrow spaces then there will be tightening of this uh, fibers blood vessel stenosis arterial back pressure created ballooning of vessels then passage of blood ultra filtrates into the tissues so the lost fluid replenished so according to this theory, the displacement of tooth is largely controlled by the fluid movements with fibers having only secondary role. But tensional theory was explaining the primary 
cause is due to the principal fibers so there is a big difference between tensional theory and viscoelastic theory viscoelastic theory is a accepted one and the next theory we have thixotropic theory so it says that the pdl has rheologic behavior of a thixotropic gel thixotropic gel we have uh, seen in fluorides when it applies pressure it becomes liquid we apply pressure it becomes gel when there is no pressure it is semi solid again so this is commonly used uh, technique in fluoride application fluoride gel application mostly they are in semi solid state but when we put it in the trays and apply pressure it becomes liquid or it becomes uh, gel type and it enters into the internal spaces so the presence of organized collagen fibers makes this theory unacceptable okay so the most accepted one is viscoelastic theory and the second function is formative and remodeling the cells of pdl which participate in formation and resorption of cementum and bone which occurs in physiologic tooth movement accommodation of periodontium to occlusal forces and also in repair of injuries and remodeling the three dimensional organization of fiber meshwork is adapted to accommodate for positional change of tooth when there is a fun changes in functional state happens it relates to the adaptability of periodontal ligament tissues both these processes can occur simultaneously and may therefore be indistinguishable the formation and remodeling so this pdl is constantly undergoing remodeling all cells and fibers are broken down and replaced by new bone or new ones and mitotic activity can be observed in fibroblast and other cells third function is nutritional pdl supplies nutrients to cementum bone gingiva by the blood vessels which provide all the anabolites and other substances to the cementum bone and gingiva and which removes catabolites fourth function is homeostatic which is the adaptability to rapidly changing applied forces and its capacity to maintain its width at constant diameter that is a constant diameter throughout the life it is evident that the cells of pdl have the ability to resorb and synthesize extracellular substances of connective tissue alveolar bone and cement so that is homeostatic property then we have sensory function though ped the periodontal ligament is ab ab abundantly supplied with sensory nerve fibers which is capable of repair of transmitting tactile pressure and pain sensation by the trigeminal pathway so basically four types of neural terminations are seen most efficient in proprioceptive mechanism so the four neural terminations are free nerve endings then raffini like mechanoreceptors which is seen in the apical area and mesonous corpuscles which is seen at the middle third and spindle like pressure and vibration endings which is also seen at apex so which are the four one is free nerve endings which is made basically elicit pain and raffini's uh, mechanoreceptors which is seen at the apical area uh, mesonous corpuscles mechanoreceptors seen at the middle third and spindle like pressure and vibration endings which is also seen at apex now we need to study the age changes in periodontal ligament so what are the changes happening over the age so increase in collagen fibrosis and decreasing in cellularity there will be areas of hyalinization the sporadic mineralization of fibers may also occur decrease in the number of periodontal fibers cellularity and formation of multi nucleated fibroblasts decrease in collagen synthesis the surface of periodontal alveolar bones are jagged and uneven and become irregular in nature replacement of some of the pdl space by fat cells so there are many changes happens as age progresses and width of periodontal ligament space for non functioning teeth it is narrower than that of functional teeth 
and with increasing age less teeth are present the force acting on the remaining teeth may increase and an increasing width of the periodontal ligament space with age seen with those particular teeth so hmm, that is all about periodontal ligament functions we have five functions physical formative remodeling nutritional homeostatic sensory functions and the tensional theory viscoelastic theory and thixotropic theory we have seen and the most accepted one is viscoelastic theory that is saying the fluid movements is the cause for transmission of force now last but not the least we need to study the blood supply which is basically inferior and superior alveolar arteries which has three sources like apical vessels that is a dental artery which supply dental pulp then the trans alveolar vessels trans alveolar vessels which is uh, penetrating vessels from alveolar bone and the third one is intraseptal vessels which is uh, anastomosing vessels from the gingiva okay and now supply we have sensory and autonomic nerves that is basically trigeminal nerve the nerve endings we have four types raffinis endings mesinous corpuscles free nerve endings also we have seen and encapsulated spindle type raffinis uh, raffinis endings found near the root apex it appear as dendritic and in terminal terminal expansion among the pdl fiber bundles they are mechano receptors mesinous corpuscles seen at mid root for tactile perception encapsulated spindle type which is a temperature receptor associated with root apex the lymphatic drainage which uh, just goes which follow the course of blood vessels okay so that's all about periodontal ligament we had covered in four sessions the first session was uh, the basic structure its formation second session was its cells extracellular material third session was the principal fibers and the last session was about the function age changes blood supply nerve supply and lymphatic drainage so we finished periodontal ligament it was a lengthy chapter there will be lots of questions will be asked so if you understood this topic so we have covered gingiva and periodontal ligament those are the soft tissues of periodontium now we'll move on to the cementum and alveolar bone which are the two hard tissue components of periodontium okay so i'll come up with cementum in my next session thank you